You are now listening to the Blind and Ginger podcast. DBD Company, sending you some product. Yeah, so I got hit up by, I think it's an Australian CBD company. I won't give them, I won't name their name yet because they haven't actually sent me anything yet. Yeah. And I'm not about giving out free promo. Yep. All right. You know me. Yeah. Okay. Bag chaser. hundred percent. If, if my mom cooks me a good meal, I'm still not going to tell people about it because she didn't pay me to advertise. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how you got to be in that, um, in that sell out your family grind set. I've been on that, bro. Yeah, you've been on that yeah. selling out your family, um, ha- sig- Sigminus. Have you actually genuinely had, because I've had it happen, like people from like high school who I didn't know, yes. like hitting me up and they like suck your dick for one message and then like, oh, can you like promote my new song? Can you use it in a video? No, I haven't heard that. I've had people hit me up to hang out um, and I'm just like, well, you know, we haven't talked in like eight years, which isn't like a... Which is, doesn't mean I won't hang out with you because I could have been boys with you and just not seen you for a long time. Yeah. But some people are like, you know. We didn't talk at all. Yeah, I didn't really, yeah. yeah. If anything, I bullied you. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, that was happening to me. It's like, dude, we were in, not only when we weren't mates, we were in like conflicting circles. <laughs> we, we were at war. Yeah. Yeah, what is this, Pocahontas? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what happens in that movie. Neither, so. I've never seen it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's weird. Like, that's happened to me like twice. Once I had a guy I went to high school with, he messaged me and he's like, I'm trying to grow on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, can you watch some of mine and like give me some feedback? Yeah, okay. And he was just doing trends. Right. Like, you know, like when they'll have just like a song in the background and then like some text. Yeah. That was his TikTok. I was like, bro, this, these aren't good. Like, Not original. I gave him good advice. Okay. I was like, there's no, there's no reason for anyone to follow you off mm. this. You're not being funny. You're just hopping on a trend. You're not giving people a reason to like come back to you. Because mm. what I found when I first started uploading was like, people would like my video like 15 times mm. and then they'd follow me. Mm. I think people need to see you a few times before they follow you. Yeah. Where they go, oh, let me check this guy out. Yeah. Yeah. So I was getting a bunch of good advice, which, you know, I'm going to give out here for free. Um, 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> got to gotta stake the reputation. Repetition. Especially if a family member asks. Yeah. You got to make them pay double. Dude, I want to tell, tell my own sister. Good. I won't tell her. Yeah, mates rate, mates rate should be triple price. Yes. Like, bro, I love you. That's why I'm charging you $15. Yeah, don't you want to see me succeed? Yeah, come on. Yeah. D- mates rate is a weird thing too. It is. It is weird. Hey, we're, we're buddies. Why don't you, you know, not make as much profit? Yeah. <laughs> it's super odd. Even, oh, do, you know what, do you know what gives me the shit's hard? Is particularly women do this, mm. like nineteen-year-old chicks. Mm. It's like they start a lash business, they start a nail business, which is whatever, fair enough. But then, like, all their friends share it. Mm. Like, the way they support each other, I'm always like jealous. Yeah, they do. They yeah, they're really coming to bat for the friends. Yeah, and like I started making TikToks because I, I was gay. Yeah, for for like a month until I got followers, I was just gay. Yeah, I'm probably still am. Yeah, probably still gay. I'm so, I'm straight again. When yeah. you get hundred k, you're straight again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. That means I'm. You're yeah. three. You're straight times three. Wow. I'm straight times two. Okay. Yeah. Which is the best one to be? Ask anyone. They say straight times. They two. say that. Yeah. Yeah. They said you want to cap it at three hundred thousand followers. You don't want to get over that. No. Then then you. What are you North? What are you True North? How straight do you want to be, exactly, bro? Exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Not gonna have any curvature. You can be too straight. You can be too straight for sure. <laughs> Does it get... Do you get so straight that you like... Do you get like homophobic? No, I think if you get... I think if you're straight enough, you just do gay shit. Mm. Like uh, gay chicken. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be the most straight to do gay chicken. Yeah, yeah, I reckon so. So have you ever been hanging out with a guy? I remember once this happened, I had like... Me and my, me and my friends always do gay chicken. And a guy was like new to the group mm. and we're doing gay chicken with him and he was like can you guys just stop that it's like making me really uncomfortable I'm just like this guy's a f- <laughs> <laughs> like if you're uncomfortable because uncomfortable you got a boner <laughs> if you're uncomfortable by gay chicken you are gay probably yeah probably maybe I don't know I don't know I can't speak for people like that because you know 
I'm the correct level of straightness. <laughs> in my research, <laughs> you are gay if you if you get offended during gay chicken. Research. Is it from my research. Oh, okay. Field research. Field research. Yeah, I've been. It's <laughs> like. I think that I got hired into the bureau when I was like nineteen. Oh yeah, so yeah. Five, five That's years a young now. age. Yeah, well, they saw my potential. What what role are you now? Pardon? What role in the bureau? Well, right now I just got you know I was like an intern for a few years. Yeah. I was in the academy. Yeah. Like they like I wasn't there yet. You know, I was one of those people that were like we're hiring and based potential. on potential potential. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then, you know, they're like, fuck, you're starting to hit it. So, like, nice promotion. I'm just chilling for Fire now. Fire out. Cheeky bonus. Yeah. Six figures, you know, it is. Yeah, nice. Yeah. The Gay Bureau of Investigation. It's, yeah, dude. It's, it's, it's a good bureau. They do a lot of good work. Yeah, they yeah they do a lot of good work. See, Dan Andrews resigned? Speaking of... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. No, he's cool. He drinks beer. Oh, and he, he... told everyone to get on the beers. True. And he also... There was also a video of him... Came out this week of him smoking... A cigarette, or it could have been a doobie. Is that why he resigned? Was it because of the backlash? For no, that? I don't think so. I think he's, uh, I think he's just probably over it. Yeah, you would be. I'm surprised he didn't resign earlier, dude. Imagine I can't like imagine you get into office. Yeah, like this is gonna be sick. I'll cruise for like four years. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I've got to what do some road works. Yeah, what am I, premier? No one, no, we, no one cares about the premium. No one cares about the premium. No one cares about Dude, the premium. Dude, all you got to do is just fix up some roads and just keep the building industry alive so the economy stays stable. That's it. True. And then a pandemic hits. <laughs> like, f- you'd be like, fuck, man. It's amazing he didn't give it up then. Yeah, well, I don't know. I guess uh, he would have been seen as like a coward, maybe. Yeah, I guess so. If he quit then. But, um... Plus, when, when was the... Election? Because... 19, I think. 19, and then there was one in 22? There was one last year, right? Oh, there was one last year. Yeah, yeah, it's there was. It must years, have been 18. Right? It must have been 18. No, it's every four years. Yeah. So maybe... Dude, maybe was, do you reckon that was like the pandemic was like his his political athletic prime? And he's like, oh, this is my Champions League. Like, this is... You know how Real Madrid won like those three Champions Leagues in a row? Yeah. That was like his version of that. Like, this is my big hardship. This is my big trial that I've got to overcome. Like, and let, let me use my political athletic prime right now and get through it. Is Dan Andrews Gareth Bale in Champions League finals? I don't know, bro. Maybe. Did you see all like the... Because I follow a lot of, you know, wogs and right-wing people and stuff. And they're like all celebrating like... Dude, it's still the same party. Yeah, it's still yeah, the same yeah. party, bro. They're still they're still the ex- same thing. The exact same people making the exact same exact, decisions. Yeah, it's just a different guy. <laughs> Imagine if like Dan Andrews left the office and like, you know, all the roadworks on Fuchs Ray Road. You're like, oh fuck, we we'll just stop. I guess <laughs> it's done. He's yep. gone. That tunnel we've been we spent fifty billion dollars on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a giant hole in the ground. Leave it. Leave Tools it. down. We can't continue on. <laughs> Sorry, it's the way it is. Life throws you I wonder what he's going to do now, though, because, like, he can't be seen in the public, Dan Andrews. And for any people who don't live in Victoria, Australia, or f- foreign listeners, Dan Andrews is the head of our state in Victoria, yeah. and he is a very divisive figure. There's never been a more divisive... There's never been a more known premier. People know the cunt's name. Yeah. That's how divisive That he means is. a lot. Yeah. That means a lot. Most people don't even know the prime minister. No. Albo. Yeah. But... Albo, you're true. But no one ever knows the Premier. No. They, they know in, in uh, when I was living in Canberra, you kind of knew the New South Wales Premier. But that's because my parents would have the news on. Um, and they're always... New South Wales Premiers for 10 years were just messing up. Yeah. Just messing up. Scandals. Um, taking helicopters with taxpayer money. Stuff oh. like that. <laughs> Have you watched that uh, the like hour long friendly Geordie's video on exposing Jordan uh, George Barilaro? Jordan Barilaro? No, I don't that's, think I have. That's an insane video, bro. Yeah, he's a dude. He's a great reporter, like investigative he is. journalist. Yeah, his, his videos are great. He's great. Yeah, he like I didn't. I it was a topic I did not give a fuck about. No, a state I don't live in. Yeah, and I never watched Friendly Geordies. And like five minutes in, I was like, Yo, this is this captivating. Is insane. Yeah. I was so cool. what did that George Barilaro guy do? Is it George or Jordan? Jo- Jordan's, I think it's George Barilaro. I think you're maybe thinking Jordan because that's the name of Jordan Shanks, like the YouTuber. Yeah, maybe. Um, 
do basically just like affairs, uh, <laughs> what, like what you were saying, like taxpayer money and yeah. stuff like that. And then like he left one role, but before he left it, he created another role based out of New York that paid 500000 USD a year. What? And then he created that role, left it vacant, yeah. then left his current role like three months later and went, oh, I'm going to do that now. Oh, wow. And, like, yeah. Probably probably for a pay rise? Just super corrupt. Yeah. What, like, I I watched like two years ago, but watch that video, anyone who's okay. interested. It's great. He got, Jordan, Jordan Shanks got his house, like, he was like, he copped it like an attempted murder. Yeah. <laughs> then someone like firebombed his house. Someone right? set his house on fire, yeah. That's crazy. I wonder if that'll ever happen to us for like our TikToks. I don't think so. I don't think anyone will ever care that much. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Dude, even like, I've never even been approached in the street. Like negatively? Like, yeah, negatively, never. No. Like considering all the hate we get online, I'm never like in the street. It's always been positive. Yeah. I wonder if there's anyone who's ever complimented us in person that like hates our videos. There has to be. Yeah, I think so. Has to have been. Um, oh, what was I was gonna say, dude. I'm, I might run for premier. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, guys, the economy is really bad. Yep. The economy is really bad, so I'm gonna make parking everywhere in Victoria free. Ooh. Which will make the economy worse. Yep. But think of the convenience. True, and think about like, that's actually convenience is good for the economy. You can just park anywhere. Boom! I'm in the news agents. Boom, I'm back out. Yeah. Hop back in the car. Go get a kebab. Boom, I'm back in the car. Boom, boom, boom. That's a great point. I didn't even think of that. I don't, I don't go to so many places. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to park. I'm not going to get a car park. There's yeah. no point. Dude, even... They're making the... um. They're making the, the bike lanes now like so wide. You notice that? In oh, the area man. I live in, bro. They, they're even impeding public transport. I was on a, I was on a bus uh, yesterday... Bus is trying to turn left at, a, at an intersection. There's like two to France level of like Peloton bikes going by on the bike, super wide bike lane. And we can't turn left. Yeah. Or they're like, oh, dude, where I live, because it's more suburban. Yeah. They'll sit on the main road, two bikes in a lane on like an 80 kilometer road and you're just stuck behind them. And they're going, what, 40? 30, 40, yeah. But even the driving here, there was like 15 delivery drivers on like one strip. Yeah. It's crazy. And also like, because obviously there's the road, road rules. Like, you got to... Like, let's say you're turning left and the bike lane... you got to wait for the bike lane to go before you can turn left. It's yeah. Like, I'm obeying that. But if they do something dumb, that death's on me. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, it's like... Okay. I kill them. Technically, I'm in the right. I've still got to sleep at night with, like, I killed a person. Yeah, you killed a person. And... It, not only a person, one of the dumbest people alive. They yeah. don't know any better. They're riding a bike in the city. <laughs> yeah, I've never ever ridden a bike in any in any city. It just looks, looks like a death trap. I would never be riding a bike. I'm like nervous in the car. Yeah. I would never be on a bike like, you know where this sh- I should go with this? Dude, I got nervous on a tram the other day. I was, it, the tram was turning left on, a, on an intersection. I did a head check on the tram. Yeah. I'm not even driving it. It's like, what? I just did it. I was like, why did I just head check? Like, that could make any difference to the outcome if this tram got hit or not. Yeah. Dude, it's it's insane. Like, I would never... I don't know how you have the ball. It, it takes balls to ride a bike. To ride a bike. City. I've never had an affinity for being on, like, anything with wheels. Yeah? Like, I can, I can drive a car, right? But, like, being on a bike, scooter, skateboard, just never felt comfortable ever. Because yeah. I... Yeah, I would just... When I'd be on the bike... You know, you see cool people like, you know, dudes like popping a wheelie on the bike and still riding and riding down the road like 20 meters. You're like, fuck, that's that's cool. And then I try to like pop the the wheel up a half an inch so the so the um, wheel rolls onto the curb. I just freaking hit the curb and like face plant. Yeah, that's, that stuff's scary. Scary, bro. Or, or um, when I was like eight, I was riding on the nature reserve behind my house with my brother. And we come up to this big hill. It's like decently steep, maybe like 30 degrees or something. I just stack at the top, at the top on the at way the down. Top, that's difficult on the do. way down, we're at the top. Like I didn't even get to the bottom and stack, just at the very top. Yeah, I would panic every time. Yes, yeah, I just don't feel comfortable on them. Yeah. I, uh, it's so weird. Dude, the other day, I was when I was leaving here, there was a um, 
a guy driving a car mm. and both his brake lights were out, therefore <laughs> the indicators were out. <laughs> yeah. So he was signaling with his hand. <laughs> How like did he it was, <laughs> Like it was the 60s. And here's the thing. I got behind him yeah. on Queensbury Street. Okay. Which is like... Uh, for listeners, just a road that leads onto the main road in Victoria, yeah. Victoria Street. Yeah, I got behind him on that, and then <laughs> I was like, I was like, Jesus, because he like full, he dude, he was doing a full like that, like pointing out the window and that. So the that's right hand turn. Oh, because I was gonna ask like for the, is he reaching across the car to get out his hand out the other side of the window? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he was sticking his right hand out like that. He's yeah. doing that, and I was like. Oh my god, bro! Get a tramp. Because like, <laughs> your car's I, broken. Yeah, and like, he, and he's aware of it because he's doing. And also, people don't know this signals. People don't know the signals from the old. And if you're on the other side of the car, you wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah, that too. And, wow. And then I follow. I followed him a little bit just because I want to see where he went. Because I was like, <laughs> I was like, look, if he's if it's just happened, yeah, and he needs to drive into the suburbs to get home, and then you go to a mechanic, but like. Fair enough. Bit irresponsible, but fair enough. Mm. I understand I want to pay like 500 bucks to get the car towed. Yeah. <laughs> he, he drove into North Melbourne. Like where you assume that he lives? Yeah. Uh, cause yeah, right. He diverted from the freeway entrance yeah. to get to North Melbourne. Which, we're in Carlton, is a two-minute drive. Yeah, that's for, pretty like, cool. Bro, you could have walked. It was like a half an hour walk. And he would have known that the lights were cooked when he got in the car. Yeah. Because if he was driving and they happened to stop working, he wouldn't have known. Yeah. And you see it like where I live. People do that, but it's like, it's the suburbs, so it's fine. Like, yeah. This is the most high volume traffic area in the state. Yeah. And there's <laughs> cars go everywhere. At yeah. Intersections in Melbourne. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty hectic. So I was, oh, that was making me laugh. That was funny. <laughs> Hope you got home safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, far out. But I was, trying, I was trying to think of someone like an 18 year old who's just like on their red peas, not knowing what the fuck this means. Trying to. Dude, in, uh, in Canberra, the. um, The. the Because it's cold as. Like the windows f- like freeze over. Yeah. In the winter. So sometimes you. um, The solution is you get warm water in like a drink bottle and spray it over the top of the um windshield. Water comes down, melts the ice on there. Yeah. But some days, you don't have one. You don't have, like, hot water. So, you have to, like... You can't see out of the car. You can lower the windows on the side and then bring them back, bring them back up and you can see out there. But I remember I got in a car one day and it was, um, you know, it was, like, m- morning. And I had to... The sun was, like, on the, on the other side of the street. So, I had to full, like, turn the car around, like, do a U-turn. But I couldn't see. It's terrifying I've done to like get in the sun so it melts the uh, ice. I've done that during the work in the morning when the yeah. car's iced over. I just open the, the window and like stick my head out. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right. If it's a right-hand turn, it's like, oh, well, oh, <laughs> we're Roll the dice. <laughs> I do that at roundabouts. Yeah. If I'm, in the, if I'm in the left lane at a roundabout and there's another car going and I can't see. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going. Oh, if there's a car on the right of you. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. like your uh, it's like your blocker in NFL. Yeah, <laughs> it's like worst case scenario, I get like a din and I don't have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, and the other car took the brunt. Yeah, man, that's hectic. You gotta be strategic when driving, bro. You do. They call it uh defensive driving. Yeah, I, I know. I'm a defensive driver. Yeah, yeah I'm on Mal- a Maldini of driving. Defensive grind. <laughs> um, dude, I did a gig on Friday. I think I, I sent you a message about this, but um, so I was doing the gig. Oh, yeah, yeah. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. So there was this, uh, so I'm just sort of in the backstage area, which to call it a backstage area is really, I'm lying because the backstage is just the entrance into the venue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the backstage is outside, out front of the venue. Yeah. So I'm uh, in the uh, in the alleyway that leads to the toilet, a.k.a. The room where people are watching comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's like your third way through the show. And this um, this chick comes up to me and she goes, you know, she starts talking to me or whatever. And she's like, yeah, like the shows? 
she's like, why is the show so bad? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you know, it's just like an open mic, you know, it's like whatever amateurs, you know, we're, we're still trying to work it out. And she's like, yeah, yeah. And like, no one's been funny. And like, even you, like, you're not funny. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. What was her like tone? Like, what do you think she, how do you think she meant it? She said it like I'm saying it, like right now. So, like, do you think it was meant to be insulting or she was just like, yeah, like, it was weird. You're not funny. It was, she just said it like she was just talking. Okay. Like she's just talking about the weather or something. Yeah. And then I go, I'm like, oh, okay. But she was being legit. Like she legit didn't think I was funny. Yeah. Like she wasn't like being sarcastic or, or you know, playing around. Um, and then I go, oh, okay. All right. And she's like, and yeah, and I, I've, because she was there the previous week. And she's like, yeah, you know, I saw that you're on TikTok as well. I'm like, I checked out some of your videos and they're not funny either. (laughs) This is insane. I'm like, what? (laughs) What? What were you saying back to her? I was just trying to be like, um, you know, still in a good mood or whatever because I'm hosting like the show. Mm. So I just want to maintain a good mood. And I was like shocked. Like I never had someone like, I've had people tell me that I'm not funny, you know, normally like if I'm bombing on stage and like having a bad interaction with the crowd or something. Yeah. Or, but, and I've never had someone tell me my videos are bad, like to my face. And I'm like, why are my videos catching stray bullets? (laughs) Like my videos aren't here. Like, why are you talking, why are you going to talk bad about my videos? Um, Then it's also like, you know, clearly some people like it. Yeah. Clearly some people like my videos. Like I've got, you know, hundred multiple hundreds of thousands of people like watching them. <laughs> no, they know. suck, dude. They suck. Yeah, they could suck and then just a bunch of people just love stuff that sucks. <laughs> um Yeah, it was just really weird. So it's a very weird interaction. Super weird. And I, I was just trying to be, you know, still friendly. I was like she's like, Oh, is that bad for me to say? I'm like, Oh, you know. I'm like God, God hates lies. It's good that you're honest. Just trying to make, you know, best out of situation. She's like, oh, don't talk to me about God. I'm like, oh, far out. Like, I can't even do like, I'm trying to turn it into like a positive. You're right a cop owls, man. Yeah, it was just like far out. Um, so it was very bizarre. And then, and then I asked her, I was like, oh, did you enjoy l- last week's show? She's like, no. Why'd you come back? That's what I said. I was like, well, why did you come back? She's like, oh, you know, I just want to watch it i'm like that that says more about you than it does about the show in her defense watching bad comedy is the best it can be but it just i don't know uh, not enough to go back the same yeah, way yeah not enough to go there yeah it was just weird and then i don't know it was very very weird it was a very bizarre interaction so i nearly i nearly flipped my shit on stage last week yeah i got heckled in my opener like my opening joke I yeah. got heckled yeah and then I just couldn't like I didn't get the momentum yeah I, I pull I had a I have a pause in my opening joke I kind of do like the set up and then I like look and then I hit the punch yeah then I revere and all the laughter <laughs> <laughs> right you wrote like in your notes for the joke you wrote wait for applause <laughs> yeah when I practiced it in my room I was like yeah Thank you. And Thank you've you. got the YouTube sound effect for applause playing. So <laughs> yeah. it doesn't, you know, you got the visualization going. Yeah. But this joke, this joke was doing well too. It was four out of four. And I added a new tag to it. Right. Because I was like, sick tag. Sweet. You know how joke writing is. Yeah, bro. I know, I know a lot You all understand about what I'm talking about. Guys, this is the biz. You wouldn't want to you guys to understand. But who knows what I'm talking about. Um, and I was, dude, I was just like, and I was like feeling sick too. I've been having like headaches the past two weeks. And I was like, I'm just going to go there. Do the set. Try this one tag. Yeah. Go home. I'm not hanging out. Yeah. I just want to come home and sleep. And I did the set up and it just... Goes, What's your Snapchat, bro? Oh, and then I was Terrible like, heckle as well. Yeah, terrible heckle. And I was just like, why? You're going to send me dick pics? Like, so I was just like doing... I was trying to do anything to get like... A lo- yeah. Anything. But everyone had been bombing. So the crowd was just like... Out of it. And then I ended up getting a laugh when I, I called him a dickhead. <laughs> I was like, where are you from? Yeah. And he's like... He's like, the streets, bro. Yeah. And I was like, you're not. I'm looking at you. I can tell you're not. <laughs> and I'm like, what street? He's like, Shepparton Street. And I'm like, 
that's a suburb, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> and that got a laugh. And I was like, that was the least funny thing I said. I just called him a dickhead. They called him an idiot. Yeah. And then like, he and then he did like, he goes, come on bro, tell your jokes. Oh, I, wa- I hate dude, that. Bro. I, wanted I hate to, that. I wanted to get down off the stage and fucking hit him with the mic. Stand. I hate that. And I literally just paused and I looked at Max and I was like, just light me, bro. Just light me. <laughs> <laughs> For listeners, the light... When you when you get the light, it means get off stage. Yeah. So if you like five minutes in at four and a half minutes, they give you the light. Dude, that's so frustrating. That's like um, I don't know. Like you're a barista, you start making coffee for someone, and they slap the coffee like out of your hand, like you're trying to make the milk, and you're like, hey, bro, can you not do that? And then they start giving you a hard time. Eventually, you convince them that you need to be holding the cup to make their coffee. They go, all right, go ahead. Yeah. It's like thanks for the permission. Thanks for your permission, you idiot. Also, and here's the thing. Here's the thing, too. From their point of view, it's funny. Yeah. If you're not a comedian, yeah. you're at a bar, you find out there's an open mic on, like, oh, I'm just going to go heckle everyone. Yes. That's funny. To you and your friends, that is funny. Yeah. So it was like, I feel like I couldn't win. Yeah. I feel like I couldn't win. So I just, I don't know. If, maybe if I was a more experienced comedian, I could have done something with it. But yeah. I just got so angry, bro. Yeah, because you're there for that attack. But I guess it's the same... I can't remember if I said this to you the other week, but it's sort of like, I don't know, you kind of, a, you can go on stage attached to like a specific result that's going to come out of like your, your jokes or your performance or whatever. In this case, like it was your, your tag you wanted to try, but the the situation didn't allow for that. Yeah. So you kind of, that's where like the adaptation kind of comes into it. And it's just experience and like just stage comfortability that comes with experience. Yeah. It's like, Dude, it's like when you go into a level on a game trying to do an objective mm. and you consistently die trying to do the objective. But like, you could just beat the level easily. Yeah. If you were trying to do that. That was like what I was doing. Yeah, right. I was like, uh, all I wanted, like, is this tag funny? Yes or no? Yeah. And then, oh, it pissed me off. I'm still mad talking about it. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Because the thing is, is like, yeah. dude, he was the exact type of guy I grew up with. Yeah. So I was hitting him with all these niche, like... Lebo from the area insults. Yeah. And no one was getting it because little Fitzroy cunts. Yeah, right. And I was like, oh, like you guys don't understand how good these insults are. Yeah, that stinks. These have I had these for like 10 years. <laughs> like, <laughs> They're so specific. Yeah, they were so niche. Yeah. They were so niche. Like, dude, if that was, if that was, if that gig was in Broadmeadows, <laughs> roof <laughs> off. But, yeah. Do you know what the weirdest interaction I had with someone was? What? Um, it wasn't actually that weird. It was just annoying. Yeah. Uh, I did, I was doing a gig and I was doing, um, brand new. I was doing brand new. It didn't go well. So I bombed and I was like, all right, cool. I know that stuff doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Whatever. <clears throat> Completely forgot about my set. Like 10 minutes later, I'm just hanging out. Forgot about my set. This guy comes up to me. He's like, Hey man, I, I watched you a couple weeks ago. Um, and you were really funny then. Can I give you some constructive criticism? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, all right. He's like, yeah, you should have done that. You should have done that joke about the Matildas coming to your school. So that's your fucking criticism. You should have done the better joke. You should have done the joke you're doing for nine months, not the not the brand new one. Yeah, I, I was like, all right, bro, and I just walked off. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, like yeah, it sucks getting um criticism from people who aren't comics. Yeah, oh. Cause it's so disrespected comedy because people think it's just talking. Which, yeah. it, which it actually is, like, ultimately. It is. It is. I thought the same thing before I started, though. I thought it was just... The same here. And then I realized, like, oh, this is one of the hardest things ever. Yeah, it's so hard because that's all it is. Yeah. You know, you got to master, like, talking. Um, and it's like, you realize how much easier it is to be situationally funny than, like, build... Where, there, where there's no pressure. Build a premise, build the scenario. Yeah, just you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, fuck. If if you could do comedy anywhere, like any venue, where where would like what's like dream venue? Emirates Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing Are you doing a theater in the round, or are you doing Are you doing like sitting in the back like Coldplay style or what? I'm doing I'm doing change rooms. Yeah, to the Arsenal squad. <laughs> Post Champions League win against Sevilla on the weekend. <laughs> Funny as I'd go UFC Octagon, just in the middle of it. That would actually be awesome. How cool would that be? That would be awesome. In the cage, caged just, comedy. That would be sick. That would be sick. 
UFC stadium would be awesome. <laughs> Are we, any round stadium would be dope. Yeah, in an arena. Yeah. Remember when we watched Chappelle and we're sitting there like, yeah, that'll be us. Yeah. That'll be us one day, 100%. That, I reckon that's got to, that actually, I reckon for me is the dream, is Rod Laver. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like hometown. Hometown. Yeah. You call it the homecoming tour. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That'd be sick. Yeah, that's such a cool... That That's like... I don't know, stadium comedy just seems like too big to me. Like doing, you know, 60K or something. Seems like too big. Um, I think arena, like 10, 15K people. Everyone says... Or every, like, pro comedian says that, like, 300, 400 is the, the sweet spot. Mm. But you want to do... You want to do theatres. Oh, like a, like arenas as well? Yeah I, I, yeah, I think that's the idea. Like, um, what's the one here in St. Kilda? Palais. Palais, yeah. Palais is, like, great. Yeah, that's... Did you... Yeah, we watched Louis there. We watched Louis there. I watched Louis and Mark Norman there. Wow. Yeah, that is a cool theatre. But do you know how I really realise it, though? I watched Jim Jeffries do his um hour show at what's the one what's the venue the exhibition center? I think the ex- exhibition center. There, I watched yeah. it there. It was like a th- three thousand, four thousand seater. Palladium? No, that's the St. Kilda one. It was like three thousand, four thousand seater. Yeah. Um, and it was cool. He obviously killed. Yeah. But then I watched him do the same set at the lounge, plus new stuff, and that was like way better. The roof was coming. You were there. The roof yeah. was coming off the place. Oh, that was an incredible set. That was, I think that's the best live set I've ever seen. Yeah. That was an incredible set. And I was like, oh, it's, it makes so much difference just in the enclosed space. Yeah, like low ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's so true. That was such a good show, man. That was awesome. That was a great show. That's epic. I think I've said it as well on eventually moving to New York. Hmm. I think I might do the London, then New York path like everyone does. Yeah. When I was speaking to Sam Talent, we, we, we hang out, you know. <laughs> Me and Sam Talent hang out. <laughs> One time, because he, he knew a mutual friend of ours. <laughs> <laughs> he bought me a beer. Dude, okay, so anyways, I was talking to Joe Rogan. <laughs> basically, no, the best mates. Yeah. When I was talking to Sam Talent, we were basically saying how hard it is to make it here. And he was like, guys, just leave. Really? Yeah, because he's from Denver. Yeah. So he had to leave. He's like, I had to face this. You just got to leave. Yeah. And where did he go? LA? Uh, New York. Yeah. Yeah. And then, isn't he a great, a great stand-up? Yeah, right. Like, it, just that. Like, it's not revolutionary advice. He was, but, but him saying, just, just leave. Yeah. It was like... And it kind of made me realize, like, oh, yeah, I do need to... Leave like, it if I want to, If I want to really chase it. Yeah. I need to go to where it's the best. Yeah. In New York. Yeah, true. Yeah, that is true. You just you can just do so many spots there, right? Yeah. You can do, so like... So many more opportunities. Three, like, three a night minimum. Yeah right, dude. Right now it's like you got to you got to be a hassler to get like five a week. Six yeah, a week. you do. I, I hate being a hassler. Yeah, it's a, it's Especially annoying when it's your friends running the gigs. Yeah, I hate doing that. Plus, I don't know for me like my, my a huge chunk of my audience is like in the United States. Mm. You know, um, plus I'm like doing more Christian comedy now. Like that's the big, definitely the biggest market of Christians yeah. in the world is is America. Yeah, definitely. So, Especially the South. I love the South, bro. Like, did you see, Um, I posted it all over my story, but there was a UFC fight on the weekend called Bryce Mitchell. And when he was getting announced in the Octagon, he grabbed a Bible and like yelled freedom. Like, oh yeah, I saw that. Like Braveheart style. I saw that. <laughs> and then his, uh, his post-fight interview, he's like, um, yeah, man, I believe, I, you know, I bought this Bible in here tonight because uh, I believe Satan's taken over this world. And... <laughs> Dude, and the commentator's like, what is this guy talking about? Um, and he, he 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 was talking about the uh, wildfires in, in Maui, like saying that they were man-made. And like, that's pretty crazy, bro. Like for someone to, um, you know, basically talk Alex Jones type stuff, like out in sport. Like what other sport can that happen? Yeah, no other sport. No other sport. An AFL player... An EPL player does it. What? Contract torn up. Torn up. Torn up. Straight to Saudi. Sa- not even Saudi League. Straight to Chinese League. <laughs> straight here. They come to the A League. Come A League. Come A League. Because they're not even making any money. Make 700 bucks a week. <laughs> I earn more than A League players. <laughs> and I work four days a week. <laughs> um, I earn four days a week minimum wage. I make more than A League players. I made more than Nanny when he was here. 
<laughs> oh, did you see um, uh, Speed packed um this Spanish player called Stefan Negru. There's a, yeah on FIFA yeah yeah, yeah on FIFA it's spelled N E G R U. Didn't he, he call him? He up? Facetimed him and was like, "Bro, how do you pronounce it?" And the guy's like, "Ah, oh, it's Stefan Negru." Yeah, like Negru. Yeah. And he's, Speed's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> It was so funny because I was just watching. Like I've had this conversation. Yeah, I've had this conversation so many times. I think I saw, I saw some other FIFA YouTuber. They um, they packed uh the the guy in the A League who's got your your last name, Stefan. Yeah, Stefan's Steph- a legend. Stefan Negro, and they were like, "What?" <laughs> the full raging over Dude, the last. Stefan's the sickest cunt. He's your boy, right? Yeah. Uh, not my boy, but we yeah. talk every now and again. Yeah. He's cool. He followed me one day because since he debuted, everyone was like, "Are you related to Stefan Negro?" Yeah. Uh, and then I like, no. And then he followed me, so I messaged him. I was like, "Bro, people are asking if we're related." <laughs> and he's like, "Bro, just start saying yes." <laughs> <laughs> he was just start saying yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, what, yeah. We talk every now and again. What are people's reactions when you tell them that you're related to him? Oh, okay. I guess it makes sense. Yeah, it's not that far fetched. No, such an because obscure it, last name. It is super obscure. Yeah. I asked him to come when I was doing my solo pod. I asked him to come on. Yeah, and he's like, "Look, man, Melbourne Victory gonna have to clear it. I doubt it's gonna happen." <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, fair enough." <laughs> yeah. it, what he, for him to go on like some com- comedian's podcast? Yeah, the media team would have to clear it. Oh, that sucks. But you understand why? I, I guess. And because I was gonna, <laughs> my plan was. <laughs> <laughs> spend the whole podcast getting him to admit the A League was shit. <laughs> that was my plan. <laughs> Just gradually ease in there. Yeah, I was I was gonna start off like because I think he's also an Arsenal fan. Okay, right. So I was just gonna be like, bro, how how good's Arsenal? Like, how yeah. much would you love to play for Arsenal? I was gonna do like that. Yeah, yeah. and make it seem like normal. And then eventually I was gonna be like, yeah, bro, like. EPL is the best league in the world. Yeah, like, I was just gonna slowly. How do you think it compares to the A League? Yeah, that's kind of what <laughs> yeah. I was gonna go for. I was gonna, I was just kind of trying to trick him into saying, it, which is actually so mean. He's such a nice guy. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was my plan. <laughs> he just went, "Look, man, the media team's gonna have to clear it." And I went, "I don't worry about it." Because <laughs> then, I think by clear it, he would be allowed to come on, but they'd have to like watch it. And then edit, like do their own edit, edit stuff and out. then make me sign a thing. So restricted, but, yeah. But hey, Melbourne Victory, hit me up to do some content with you. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I'm actually gonna ask Stefan, like, bro, hit me, like, yeah, hit, 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 hit us up, bro. Yeah, that'd be sick. I w- I wouldn't mind doing some stuff like, like with the UFC or whatever. Like next time, next time it comes to um, to Australia. Yeah, I think well, that'd be cool. Well, John did. Yeah. And I, mean, I, f- I feel like I'm, a, I'm probably the most knowledgeable, or one of the most knowledgeable, like, well-known content creators in terms of well-knowledgeable on MMA. Maybe. That's what I think. Maybe. Like, I'm, I've got a pretty decent... I'm like, not going to say yes or no, because I don't know enough. To yeah, know. right. But, um, yeah, yeah I, in terms of actual fighting, I don't, I don't know how to fight, but I know how to watch people fight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I listened to a podcast from that Bryce Mitchell guy, the, the Bible guy. It, dude, he full believes the Earth's flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said one point. He said, um, he, like he doesn't believe gravity exists. Oh my god! Dude. And he said, uh, the it re- doesn't though. To be fair, I don't, I don't know, bro. I don't, I don't know nothing. And he goes, yeah, the um, it's actually density. He's like, yeah, well, you know, you drop something, it falls to the ground. That's because it's denser than air. And he goes, what happens when you let go of a helium balloon? It floats up in the air. He's like, what, what's happened to gravity there? I was like, like what? Is there an explanation for that? I'm sure there would be. I'm sure one Google yeah. search would solve that. Maybe. It was just like an interesting point. I don't think I heard that point before. Have you seen footage of um, man walking on the moon? It's when they were first trying to walk. Oh, they're like stumbling. They're like face and planning and shit. It's so <laughs> funny, bro. It's the funniest thing. It looks like they're hitting that um what's that uh what's that New York dance move that they hit? The um Oh, I can't remember. It got really popular last year. The uh getting sturdy. Looks like they were getting sturdy. 
know what I mean? They're doing the Michael Jackson lean forward. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like crawling on all fours and everything. Yeah. That's hectic. Dude, I, was, I remember in primary school. Yeah. Uh, when we were to do like a... Pre- you know, you used to like, they're like, do a presentation on your famous on a famous person. Yeah. I'd always pick Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> yeah. Because no one ever knew who he was. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'm smarter than everyone. Oh, because he was the second one on. Yeah. Yeah, I used to do that as well. We I remember we had a... Uh, you had to pick like some person who explored some explorer and they they we had a pick of four people i just picked the fifth guy yeah. <laughs> just went completely out of the box and just picked a different guy it's like i'm, I'm not adhering to your standard of yeah. who i'm gonna who, which adventure i'm gonna pick going against the average bro yeah bro 100 percent. i picked uh i think henry mawson or something because he was the name of the suburb next to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'll he, do it. He was some ar- Arctic explorer. Had to eat his dogs. <laughs> That's like every Arctic explorer. They always got to eat their dogs. I reckon they just secretly go out there because they like the taste of dog. It's all a ploy? <laughs> yeah, because they want to eat some dog. <laughs> May- Dude, maybe. I'm sure yeah, that has happened. Like, why are they all, you know... It's all, I guess they're in a desperate situation, but... I would never eat my dog, no matter how hungry I was. you just die? I'd die, yeah. Yeah. What if? But what if you had like eight or nine dogs? That you, then yeah, you'd pick off the least favorite. That's what that because that's yeah. what they did. But yeah, I my one dog, I never could never. Nah, nah. yeah, that that'd be too too difficult. Actually though, fuck. I was playing Rivals today and he fucking knocked the control out of my hands. I was gonna kill him. Rivals on FIFA. Yeah. Well, that'll yeah. do it. Came up, he wanted a carrot. He just fucking slapped the control out of my hands. I was like, bro. Dude, it's so, so funny dogs, like, their timing of meals. It's so funny. Yeah. Dude, he gets a carrot every day at 12. <laughs> yeah, I remember you telling me this. Carrot every day at 12. I got home from gym today at 12.20. Yeah. Bro, you think the dog had been starved for two weeks. <laughs> he's jump, He's jumping up in, like, clawing glass, win- like, the glass window <laughs> to get outside. <laughs> and then... He wants that carrot. Yeah. And then I open the door to get in. He jumps on me and just viciously barks. I'm like, I'm going to give it to you. I'm Dude, gonna your give it your to dog is like a wild, wild west character. Like, I'll see you on the street at noon. We're gonna <laughs> duel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I he's got a carrot in his hip holster, like, <laughs> 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 like quick drawing it, bang. <laughs> and then you won't see him for three hours, and he wants his dinner, and he just sulks into the room, like, <laughs> come on, where is it? Where is it? So, what does he do with the carrot? Does he, like... Obviously, he eats it, but what's the... Because I know dogs have, a, like, a peculiar way of eating particular snacks. Oh, he thinks he's a human. Yeah. He holds it up in his paws. Oh, it's so cute when they do that. And then just munches it. <laughs> yeah. That's adorable when they do that. Yeah. My parents' dog, they give her, uh... When they're about to leave, they give her, like, this little schmacko cigar. Like, it looks like a little cigar thing. So, they give it to her... And they're leaving, so she's just like anxious as she's like, like freaking out in her <laughs> yeah. face. And then she never eats the cigar. Then she goes and like hides it somewhere, like under a bed or in the backyard. <laughs> so when they get home, she greets them, and then she runs and go grabs the thing, and then eats it. Like because like, they're there, it's kind of sweet. Yeah, she's like, like a the sweetest dog, bro. It's just crazy. I waited for you to. I waited for you to come <laughs> back to enjoy my food. <laughs> Yeah, my dog, every time I give him the carrot, he spends like 30 seconds sniffing it. It's like, it's the same it's carrot. It's the same carrot. It's like, it kind of upsets me. It's like, you don't trust me after all this time? <laughs> and look, oh, dude, I'm so, like, if there's a bad bit of the carrot, I'll go and cut it off, bro. Wow. I'll go and cut it off. I'll look after him. Do you reckon, because dog, he must be able to smell different, like, varieties of carrot and different, like, soil quality that it was grown in. Yeah, probably. You think about that? Yeah. But it's just weird. Like he goes out onto the onto the decking, yeah. Um, and he'll like, so he'll like look, scout it out. It's like everything's the same as it was thirty minutes ago. Oh, he's looking for like Discrep- discrepancies. Yeah, yeah. It's playing before and after in his head. <laughs> so, bro, it's the same. Yeah, my, my parents' dog does, does that. She um, because my parents got like a pretty like decently sized backyard, and there's a reserve behind it. And on the side of the house, there's um. The entrance to the nature reserve. So there's always people walking up and down it. So she barks at everyone, bro. There'll be like some 80-year-old woman walking by and she'll just just bark her head off at them. <laughs> and when they're in the... Uh, 
if they're gardening or whatever, she's got to like, she, she feels like she's got to keep watch. Yeah. Uh, it's like really, um, you feel bad for her because it's like anxiety inducing that she's got to like keep watch. And yeah, keep you're protect. like, just relax. It's fine. Yeah, chill out. But um, yeah, dogs are so cool, bro. And they look at you like, why aren't you freaking out as well? <laughs> like, well I'm not worried. My neighbor just got a dog um, across like our backyards, like, obviously connected by the fence, but our, you can see into each other's decking. Yeah. So we can like go out like, hey, like it's one of those type of scenarios. Mm-hmm. And they just got a dog. So I know what breed is. It's the cutest little thing. Yeah. Um, and my dog's just been bullying it. Every time, they're, <laughs> every time they're both on the deck, he fucking like climbs up onto the gate and like, like barks at it. Yeah. He's so mean to this fucking dog. Yeah. And then like last week, it just started barking back at him. Oh, wow. And dude, he shed a brick, sprinted inside. Wow. So like, yeah, you're not so tough, are you? Yeah. He's a little bitch. Wants his carrot. Yeah. Wow, dude. And once I was walking him and he was barking his head off at this German shepherd across the road. Yeah. So, all right, let's go across the road. Yeah. Uh, uh, Starts shrieking. Like, he's all talk, my dog, man. <laughs> he's all talk. My mum told me a good uh, dog-based joke. So, there's two dogs uh, talking to each other. One of them goes, uh, knock, knock. And the other dog just goes, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I hate it. It's a good joke, eh? It's a good joke, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, as. I, I, I tell you a joke from The Sopranos. Yeah. This is the best. Yeah. Why did no one go to the Jewish Chinese accountant? The Jewish Chinese accountant? Why? Because no one could fucking understand him. <laughs> Here's the best part. Here's the best part. Yeah. That joke is like a pivotal scene in the series. Because it's like Tony's character shifting moment. Because mm-hmm. he says it. And then everyone's like laughing their head off. And it cuts to him in therapy. He's like, I'm funny, but I'm not that funny. <laughs> and he, he realised like all his friends are just fake. Oh, they're just <laughs> laughing at him because he's in a position of power. Yeah. <laughs> but it's Man. so funny. It's that joke is like the stem of it. Far out. You never have that moment in uh, on stage doing actual comedy. If no. anything, it's the opposite. Yeah, half the time the audience like doesn't want you to fa- doesn't want you to win. That you happens. Um, your your footy team's in the final this weekend, yeah. Yeah, bro. Collingwood, right? Up the pies. Flag pies. Up the pies. How you feeling about that? Nervous. When was the last time they were in a grand grand final? Twenty eighteen. Oh, okay. We're we're the worst team ever in grand finals. What's the win rate? Uh, fifteen out of forty five. Wow. Shocking. Yeah, that's bad. In my lifetime, we've been in five, one, one. Wow. Drawn one, lost three. What year was the one you won? 2010. Wow, okay. And I was too young to even... Really enjoy it. Really enjoy it. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, dude, we, we won the prelim. Like, me, mom, and dad, like, were hugging. It was pretty, like, pretty cool. <laughs> it's like, this is a sweet moment. Yeah, it is, it is pretty cool. What, like, yeah. your team actually winning can yeah. do. And, dude, I've never seen my dad like that. Because <laughs> usually he's just angry at the footy. Yeah, he lets it dictate his week. Yeah, right. right. But it was weird. For, to paint a picture of my dad, late fifties Italian man. <laughs> That's all you need, right? Yeah. JWS are like lining up for goal, and my dad's like crossing his fingers, like miss, 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 <laughs> and then they'd be like, yes. <laughs> it's like, where did, where did this character trait come from? <laughs> like, yeah, you've been stoic the entire twenty four years I've known you. The <laughs> footy. And the footy, like... Brings it out. Yeah. Today, some guy... My dad's a renderer. The guy was dropping off the del- render delivery. Yeah. And I saw the truck and I went, oh, I wonder if dad needs a hand, like, bringing the render in. And I stick my head out. And then he's just talking, like, to the guy. He's like, Carlton had a good season, you know? Like, <laughs> it was just some Sudanese guy. Like, this guy follow footy? <laughs> like... Oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Carlton's like... Um, yeah, I've, I've been hearing heaps of that. Like yeah, Carlton just you know, you can't you can't be disappointed. Like it just came out of nowhere this season. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. It's true. That's why everyone's saying it. Yeah. Um, I was watching uh, the NRL on the weekend. There was uh, the Broncos were playing the New Zealand Warriors. I watched the second half with Lutus at uh, at a pub. <laughs> what pub? Uh, 
I think Exford we were at. Oh yeah, nice. Or uh, no, no, we went from Exford to Imperial. Yeah, Imperial was way better to watch it at. And um, dude, the so the Broncos were up like thirty to twelve or something, or twenty twenty six to twelve or, or something, and they they made a break. The worst forward pass ever. The ball went forward like two meters, and then in the same play, they throw another pass that goes forward by like a meter, and they score off it. And the ref didn't call it back. Um, and there was a New Zealand guy in there just going off, bro, going off. You cheating Aussies! You <laughs> cheaters! You cheating bastard Aussies! Stop cheating! She and he starts yelling at like Bronco supporters in the in the <laughs> venue. Like, they have anything to, <laughs> to do, do with, with it. it. <laughs> Stop cheating. He's, like, yelling at it like a 30-year-old like, woman. Like a kid. <laughs> yeah. They're cheating. Stop cheating. <laughs> and then all it is who I'm with, just to complete, you know, you know him, he, he'll stir the pot. Yeah. So then he saw that, and then the Broncos just ran away with the game. Then every time they scored after that, he was, like, cheering. He was like, yes, come on. <laughs> Dude, I got into the dumbest fucking argument with that Fucking idiot, Waltus. <laughs> yeah. Last Thursday. Yeah. Was, My, it, was it football related? Yes. I've, I've watched him uh, meet like two or three English people in the last few weeks. Yeah. He, it's like he's trying to set a record with himself how quick he can get like a Premier League argument with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One, once I was yeah. with him and some guy had a Liverpool tattoo. Yeah. And he went, dude, it was, do you know where it was? You know that burger joint across the road from the comics lounge? Yeah, it was there. It was like two a.m. They stayed open just to serve us, and and some guy walks past with a Liverpool t- calf tattoo of the Champions League. Um, someone like Salah on the trophy. Yeah, and he just goes to me, but loud enough for them to hear. I goes, yeah. "Bro, Salah's shit." <laughs> Did they turn around? Yeah. <laughs> then he got into immediately. Him. It was an argument. <laughs> but I'm going to the dumbest. He comes up to me. Comes up to me at Dirty. Dude, yeah. thank God I was the next act up. Yeah. Thank God this conversation lasted five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Comes up and goes, Bro, Saudi League's a top five player, bro. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. And he's like, Name me five leagues that are better. Yeah. That was, Name me five <laughs> leagues that are better. <laughs> the maths doesn't even make sense. So I go, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. I didn't even notice that. He's yeah. claiming they're a top six league then. Yeah. I go, EPL, <laughs> yeah. La Liga, Serie A, then I said Portuguese league. Yeah. And then I said the Dutch league. Then I said France. Yeah. France not a top five league, bro. <laughs> I didn't say it was. But even if it's not, it's better than the Saudi league. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, it's not, bro. I'm <laughs> like, bro, any relegation candidate in France would be any relegation candidate in Saudi. Yeah. And every top league in France would be any top league team in Saudi. Yeah. Bro, it's not. <laughs> They're not, bro. And then, oh, <laughs> fuck, what did he say? I was getting so fucking fed up. Because um, you know he just shifts the goalposts? Yeah, I've yeah. stopped having arguments with him. I knew I was going to... I think he was trying to bait me too, and I just fell for it. And then... Yeah, I don't know if he... Uh, I, I think he just likes discussion. And I don't think he realizes that he... Uh, is combative every time. Yeah, but it's actually... It's actually your fault. If you get in an argument with him, he's that's right. what I've learned yeah. in the years knowing him. Um, for the audience, this is just one of our good friends. Um, yeah, and it's actually your fault. That's what I've found. Yeah. If I get in an argument, I, I've only got myself to blame. And then he switched it yeah. from, bro, check the coefficients. It's the best league in Oceania. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what, what's the coefficient? It's like the league gets a ranking based off like where each team kind of finishes. Oh, okay. So that's like which league. It's a literal listing of which team's the best, which league's the best. Okay. And he, and then he just goes like, bro, Saudi's better than Australia. I'm like, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And he goes, yeah, it's top five league. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I'm going on stage. I'm going on stage. You know the dumbest argument that I had with that fucking guy was? What? <laughs> I think I told you this when it happened. Oh, yeah. It made me furious. Because when I didn't know him as well. Yeah. Uh, it was a Friday night. Yeah. It was a Friday night. Arsenal were playing Sunday. Oh, I guess Monday morning, 2 a.m. And I'm talking to him on Friday, Saturday night. He's like, bro, are you going to watch Arsenal? I'm like, yeah. He's, no, you won't, bro. 
Like, what do you mean? <laughs> already f- asked you a question and already knew the answer that... Yeah. To, regardless of what you said. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm like... Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm not going to watch it? And he's like, it's 2 a.m., bro. You're not going to watch it. <laughs> it's like, it's 2 a.m. now. We're out at 2 a.m. now. This isn't like unfeasible. To- <laughs> like, I don't know what he was saying. Like, 2 a.m. was like, nah, you won't be up at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you'll be asleep, bro. It's a Sunday night. You'll be asleep. And I'm like, nah, I finish work at midnight. By the time I drive home, it'll be one. Yeah. I'll stay out for an hour. He's like, cuz, just say you're not going to watch it. <laughs> and then I don't know. I, don't, I engaged. I was like, I was like, Bro, I'll message you at two a. I'll message you at two a.m. on Monday to be like, I'm watching it. He's like, "Cause you're just gonna set an alarm." <laughs> I'm a psycho, and like that doesn't count. Yeah, like as you watching it. I know. Like, yeah, it was a great game, but I set an alarm for it, so it doesn't count that I watched it. I think he was saying I was just gonna set the alarm, message him, then go back to bed. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, this is got. This was like twenty minutes of back and forth. Then Monday morning comes, he texts me. Are you watching it? Like as the game's on? Yeah. Yeah. I go, yeah. And he's like, and then he's like, just messaging me stuff that's happening in the game. I'm like, bro, stop messaging me because I'm watching an illegal stream. It's delayed. Yeah. He's like, bro, just buy Optus Sport. I'm like, why when I can illegally stream it? Yeah. He's like, then it won't get spoiled. Like, it won't get spoiled if you just fucking shut the fuck up. <laughs> if you just shut the fuck up, it won't get spoiled. <laughs> yeah. And then. <laughs> And then, like, we scored or conceded one of the two. Yeah. And he messaged me, that was a shit goal. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I told you not to message me. And yeah. he's like, if you had Optus Sport, it wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> My brother. And then I muted him. I muted him on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> there you go, bro. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. But that's funny. Yeah. Shout out to Altus. Love that guy. Just oh, bro, he's the best. He, he's, he's the, he was the OG right winger. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Space is fake. Yeah, we get along like... No, we've always got along really well. But we get along like even better now. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that dude. Do you know what? And the thing about arguing with him, he 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 never really gets emotional. No. Nah. In the argument. Never. Which, um, which I always think like if you get emotional in an argument and the other person isn't, I think you're more likely to be the incorrect person. Well, yeah, I guess if... But it can be annoying if, like, you just know you're right and someone's, yeah. like, too dumb to understand what you're saying. Yeah, I'm not saying you are wrong. Yeah. I'm, I reckon... I'm just saying more... I, I reckon statistically, the person who gets emotional in, a, in an argument is the person more likely to be incorrect. That's true. That's what I think. Dude, with that guy, I've had so many, like, I've had screaming matches with him, calling each other, like, you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And then it'll end, and he'll be like, all right, bro, see ya. And just like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. the best, the best is when you beat him. And then he'll pull the, all right, bro, why do you care what I think anyway? <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. And then you go, yeah, well, why do, the other day I was, so uh, good at arguing. I was playing, uh, we are playing soccer, I was warming up with him. We we're just kicking the ball in between us. I'm holding a glass, one litre bottle of water. So I'm holding it, you know, I'm not holding it as I would hold my hands because the, the, it's an open glass bottle. I don't yeah. want to be pouring out water or have the chance of dropping it because it's glass. So I'm holding it kind of up, upright. He's like, yeah, bro, that's a big problem a lot of people make when they, when they play. You got to relax your arms, bro. I'm like, dude, I'm holding a bottle. He's like, yeah, even still. <laughs> I know exactly how he said it as well. I and it kind of annoyed it. me. It, it actually like, I was like, ah, oh, damn. And I put the ball down. I'm like, and then my ego was like, see, look, I do hold my arms <laughs> in the correct position. Yeah, you got a sterling run. Yeah, you do, yeah. That's what I was doing. That's what I was holding my bottle out to the side. <laughs> like sterling. Um, do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Uh, just before we go, uh, tomorrow on my YouTube at Anthony Negro. I'll be uploading a FIFA RTG. Will this be up by... This podcast be up by the time you do the... Fuck, that's a good point. Uh, there's a FIFA RTG up on my <laughs> YouTube account. Um, it's at Anthony Negro. Uh, I'm at 700 subs, so get get me to 1,000. Nice. Because if I can at least... If I can at least make any money off AdSense, it can be like 5 cents. 
Yeah. I can justify it to my parents doing it. Yeah, sweet. Um, so please help me get to a thousand subs. Nice, bro. And I'm going to be uploading some other stuff. I've got some other videos planned because I've got a capture card and shit now. It's coming. Nice. It's coming tomorrow, bro. So nice, bro. G up. Yeah. G up. Woo! Good. Suey. Sweet. Shout out Stefan Negro too, the, the guy. Yeah, bro. And Stefan Negru. 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 <laughs> Shout out him as well. Shout out all my Negroes, man. <laughs> Thanks, guys.